Together with the eyelashes, the eyelids help protect the eyes from foreign elements that can impact them. The eyelids have another essential function, the lubrication of the eyes. In this episode of Aki Talk, Dr. Angelica Cifuentes will be discussing the eyelids and the important part they play in maintaining a healthy tear film and healthy eyes. Dr. Cifuentes? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of Aki Talk. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Please welcome Dr. Angelica Cifuentes. Dr. Cifuentes, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Nick, for having me. It's great to be here. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Cifuentes, and uh, we appreciate that you're taking the time out of your day to visit with us. Before we actually get started in our conversation, Dr. Cifuentes, do you mind uh, maybe letting us know a little bit about your background and your specialty? Of course. So I am Dr. Angelica Cifuentes. I was born in Colombia, raised in Miami. I am a bilingual practicing board certified optometrist. I am a recent graduate from Nova Southeastern University, and I practice in Miami, Florida. I truly have a passion for sharing um, my journey of, of my optometry career, while also educating the public on eye health through my Instagram, a tiny optometrist. Well, excellent. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Fuentes. And again, thank you for joining us here on OcuTalk today. Uh, so for our discussion today, Dr. Fuentes, we were actually hoping that you can discuss with us the eyelids and the importance of taking care of your eyelids. So what exactly is the purpose of the eyelids? So the eyelids main function is to provide protection for any mechanical injury. They also facilitate cornea and conjunctivitis metabolism, and they help maintain a moist environment on the cornea, which provides better optics and vision. Well, thank you for that explanation, Dr. Fuentes. And actually, can you go into explaining more about the part the eyelids play in developing our tear film? Like, how, how does that process work exactly? Of course. So to answer this question, we first have to understand the tear film and the layers. So the tear film has three layers. The anterior layer, which is called the oily layer, that's a layer that's closest to the atmosphere. Then we have the middle layer, which is the aqueous layer, has all the nutrients. And the posterior la layer, which is called the mucin layer, and is that's the closest to the cornea. With that in mind, um, the eyelids have three roles in the development of our tears, which is production, distribution, and drainage. Production is done by the meibomian glands. Those are small sebaceous glands that are located in the upper and lower lid margin. They're responsible for secreting the anterior lip layer by producing meibom, which is an oily-like substance that slows the evaporation uh, that the anterior lipid layer. Then you also have accessory glands, which are called the cross and wall frame, and they contribute to that aqueous um, layer of the tears. Then we go into the distribution. When our eyelids are closed, they spread mucin layers of the tears evenly across the cornea and the conjunctiva that helped with proper tear formation. Then we have the drainage. So they do a lot. <laughs> um, the drainage part, when the eyes open, the tears passively drain into the punta, which is that lower. And we have a, in the bottom and the upper of our eyelids, a little dot. And um, they evaporate via capillary attraction. But when the eyelids are closed during a blink, then there's a mechanical mechanism that takes place that helps pump the tears into the lacrimal sac. So well, a lot of things. <laughs> well, definitely, they definitely do a lot of things. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Fuentes. And uh, so what would happen in, in the case that one of our tear films, uh, one of our tear films is compromised? Like what, what happens, what happens after that? So the most common thing that happens is dry eye, but it's a multifactorial disease. So for example, um, evaporate, there's a type of dry eye that's called evaporative dry eye. And that's when the lipid layer of the tear film gets compromised and is very often associated with things like blepharitis or meibomian gland dysfunction. There's another type of dry eye called aqueous deficient. And that is when the aqueous layer gets compromised and it's very often associated with age. The majority of my patients, I see both of these conditions combined. Well, again, fantastic information, Dr. Fuentes. And um, so now in the the digital age that we're in right now, you know, things like screen time being what they are, what happens if people don't blink as often as people should? 
So recently, um, I've noticed this a lot, especially on the younger population, um, prolonged use of computers and electronic devices impact how our tears evaporate from the surface of the eyes, which lead to dry eye. So studies show that we blink roughly about 66% less when we're using the computer. So a decrease in blinking rate is what's worse in dry eye when using all of these electronic devices. Well, thank you for that information, Dr. Fuentes. And what are the complications can happen with the eyelids that will affect the eyes and our tears? So there are a variety of conditions that can affect the eyelids and also affect our tears. The most common ones that I see in clinic are blepharitis and my bone gland dysfunction, which is basically when that inflammation of the eyelid is secondary to the clogging of those my bone glands um, that produces redness and dry eye. Um, things like coriolans, which are size, can also affect the eye and the glands of our eyelids. And conditions like ectropion, which is basically the out, um, outward turning of our eyelid margin, because the eyelid margin is positioned outwards, it causes a lot of irritation and dryness to the cornea. So, and that's just a few of them. There's the majority, there's a lot of um, diseases that can cause dry eye and that affects our eyes and cause dry eye. Well, fantastic. You actually just touched on it just in your previous answer, Dr. Fuentes. But if you don't mind me asking, what happens to the, the, to the glands once, once they become blocked? So you get that condition that I talked about called my bone gland dysfunctions. Patient basically experience stinging, dryness, itching, burning, light sensitivity, um, decreased vision, foreign body sensation. So this happens because those glands that I talked about earlier get clogged and it decreases the produ production of that oil layer that we need. So the tears evaporate quickly from the surface, which leads to, to dry eye disease. Uh, that definitely, definitely excellent information there, Dr. Fuentes. And um, when you talk a little bit about what it leads to dry eye disease, let's say, for instance, like I, I'm a terrible patient and I, I just go, you know, I, I don't go to see don't go see my doctor when when eyelid conditions get worse. What what can happen if, if, if these signs and symptoms are ignored? So definitely if the underlying cause of dry eye is not treated, the problem can easily exacerbate and the patient can be, become more symptomatic. So not all dry eye are the same. So we need to definitely see an eye doctor to be able to determine which type of dry eye do you have and what would be the best treatment that would be for you. Well, excellent. And um, so what would be like a worst case scenario then? And let's say like if I, if I let everything go untreated, did, is, there, is there a worst case scenario that would happen? So there, again, there's a lot of eyelid conditions, but I feel like the most dangerous one would be something like a malignant melanoma, which is um, the most lethal primary skin cancer. Um, that's why I feel like it's so important to check every single year with your eye doctor. And even if it's before your year, if you notice any eyelid changes or abnormalities, any growth, any bump, just go to your eye doctor, make sure that everything's safe and take care of the problem. Well, excellent. That's a very good advice, Dr. Fuentes. Thank you for that. And are there any preventative measures that you know patients can do to, to kind of avoid those worst case scenarios and, and, and avoid kind of, you know, have, having this happen? Of course. So I personally highly recommend having an um, eyelid hygiene routine at night, especially after brushing your teeth and washing your face. I feel like it's important for you to go ahead and clean your eyelids with the adequate products for your eyes um, to keep the surface of the eyelids clean. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Cifuentes. And uh, can you tell us more about what eyelid hygiene is and how important it is for health of our eyelids and our eyes? Of course. So eyelid hygiene is extremely important. I feel like it's the most important thing that the patient can do to help with their condition. Um, basically, it's just creating a habit. The first thing I feel like you should do is, as always, wash your hands. Then um, ideally we'll be removing any makeup with appropriate um, commercially prepared eyelid wipes. Then I would recommend to clean the eyelids with OcuSoft lid wipes or the foam, making sure to reach the baseline, the base of the lashes to prevent any overgrowth of bacteria on the lid margin. I also like to include warm compresses at night with eye masks. Um, just to make sure to keep those my bombing glands open and clean and always do this, do first the warm compresses and then do the cleaning of the eyelids. That would be the order I would do it. 
Well, that is excellent uh, advice there, Dr. Fuentes. And again, thank you for uh, using our products and mentioning that there. Um, and so you actually mentioned it in your previous answer about makeup. Uh, like, what about makeup? Do, do cosmetics play a part in eyelid health? Huge part. So not only cosmetics, but also nowadays lash extensions. So makeup accumulates under um, our eyelids. Sometimes when I flip the patient's eyelid, the superior eyelid, you see small little black dots. And that is because the patient's not properly removing their makeup at night. Not only that, but makeup increases symptoms of dry eye. There's also um, tiny mites called demodex and that those little mites love cosmetics, which is the reason why we don't recommend sharing makeup or sleeping with makeup. Now, I mentioned last year's extensions and those can accumulate dirt and allergens. So cleaning them and cleaning your own lashes are extremely important. That definitely doesn't sound like fun, those little mites. Uh, yeah, don't, you don't like those Dimidex mites here. Uh, <laughs> well, Dr. Fuentes, um, I had another question. Uh, if you see like a patient who's already presenting some eyelid conditions, such as like meibomian gland dysfunction or blepharitis, uh, do you have a standard treatment uh, protocol for your patients who are like showing those mild to moderate symptoms already? Yeah, so for mild um, meibomians or meibomian gland dysfunction or blepharitis, I recommend eyelid scrubs. Again, I personally like OcuSoft and cleaning um, with any hypochlorous acid agent. I believe your brand carries it as well. And also add um, some warm compresses with the eye mask for 10 minutes twice a day and artificial tears. I prefer preservative free if the problem is associated with any sort of dry eye. Well, excellent information, Dr. Fuentes. And again, thank you for the shout out for our Soft products. Um, and so on, on, the, on the flip side, uh, you saw, we were talking about mild to moderate patients. What about your patients who are like more severe? Like, is there, is there a different treatment protocol for that? Yeah. So for something that's like more like moderate to severe, then I'll add an antibiotic ointment and omega-3 oral supplements. If the problem is severe, I'll add an antibiotic and steroid ointment and maybe start considering some oral agents. If I don't see much improvement, then I'll go ahead and consider things like lipoflow, tear care, intense pulse light therapy, more easily known as IPL, um, and pro probing of the meibomian glands. That's something that I would do for more moderate to severe cases. Oh, fantastic. And so Dr. Fuentes, what would be your long-term, like kind of long-term recommendation as far as, you know, just uh, at, for at home after you see the patients and after they go home, what would be the long-term uh, uh, treatment protocol for them? For maintenance at home, I would definitely recommend warm compresses for 10 minutes, at least every night, max twice a day, morning and night. Um, after those glands are nice and warm, then I would recommend a digital massage. We have to understand that the meibomian glands are sitting in our eyelids vertically, so like little soldiers. So the digital massage, if we do it horizontally, it's really not going to do much. So even pressing upwards in this direction or in a rolling manner is going to really help secrete that oil that is being clogged on our eyelids. Once that's done, then I'll go ahead and start my um, cleaning eyelid hygiene again twice a day or at least once a day with OcuSoft. As I personally just love the um, wipes from OcuSoft to clean my eyelids. I do it myself. Um, and if there's any Demodex present, then we definitely want to go into um, tea tree oil products, right? Um, there are also products at home like new lids. For patients who really can't quite get all of the debris from the lashes, it's a mechanical brush that you can put on the base of your lashes so that it can really, really get a deep, deep, deep cleaning into the lashes. And always apply some artificial tears. Like again, I said earlier before, I personally prefer preservative free tears. With um, maintenance of your eyes, it's a very slow process. So I always recommend the patient to start doing it at least every night for three consecutive months. After the three months, they will start noticing a difference in their eye health. Well, that's definitely excellent advice, Dr. Fuentes. And I really like the imagery of the little small soldiers around the uh, That's what I was thinking about. So that's pretty cool. Um, but Dr. Fuentes, before we leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to let our audience know about? 
Yeah, so I really feel like dry eye is something that is upcoming, especially with all these electronic devices out here now. And we basically, our world is digital now. Um, I would really tell patients to just go to your annual eye exams, check with your doctor. Not every dry eye is the same. Not every eyelid problem is the same. So getting that annual eye exam is important. Follow the instructions that your doctor tells you to. Um, they are, those recommendations are customized to you. So if you help us help you, then everything is better. Well, again, excellent advice, Dr. Cifuentes. Thank you. And everyone, that was Dr. Angelica Cifuentes. Dr. Cifuentes, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor.